Okay, I'm in the middle of telling you a story about a banking app. So in a banking app, security is obviously a very, very high concern. So the audit trail had to be every single time you touched an account, did anything at all, it got recorded. So the code auditors and the testers and the security people looked over this thing. It took them about a week to come back and say, yes, your, your transaction thing is good. And so, you know, meanwhile, back at the ranch, we're working on other things because it took that long for them to come back and bless off on this base class. And then I wrote the deposit class. And all I did was inherit from the base class and, you know, do a couple, a little bit more sanity check and a little bit more input validation to make sure, you know, you're not trying to deposit a negative number and you have the right permissions and all the rest of that stuff. And how long do you think it took to go through the code auditors, the testers, and the security people? It took one day. Why? Because the foundation had already been laid with the base class. And they went, oh, you're inheriting from the base class? Okay. I don't need to look at everything now. All I need to look at is the things that you added. Now, doesn't that story make sense? Okay. You might want to rewind and, and pay attention to that one more time. What I'm basically saying is using inheritance and in a, in a way using a, a, an abstract class means that you put an awful lot of work up front getting it perfect. And then after that, making a different type of employee becomes a trivial task that you could just knock off in seconds. Okay? That's the beauty of using inheritance is I can, I can run faster because I have a pre-approved base class then all I have to do is just take that as a starting point and I'm 99% done as soon as I hit the word extends. That's cool. Okay, so on page 677, or 667, they have a new thing called interfaces. Now, interfaces is slightly different. They're kind of, sort of, like inheritance, but not really. All right, one more time. Inheritance is Taking an existing class, whether or not you have source code, is not relevant. This could be somebody else's code, or it could be stuff right out of the Java library, and I can still inherit it from it, even though I don't have a source code. Cool? All right. Now, that works pretty doggone well, but if you remember, one of the limitations is I can only have one of those things I'm extending. I can't inherit from multiple things. So what happens if I want to break that rule somehow? Well... That's what interfaces were for. Interfaces are, here's the things that you must include in your document, in your program. Uh, now, quite frankly, the use of interfaces is not at all unlike what I do for the assignments. Remember how I go here, I'm gonna click that guy to make it go. Well, let's go to something a little bit more sophisticated. Let's go to employee. Okay, what I do is I, I copy this, right? And then I give this to you and say, you know, in your, in your assignment number 84, uh, you need to do this, okay? And I give you all this stuff. That's what we're talking about. It's it's basically a, a contract that says, if you're gonna create an employee class, it's gonna have to have an imp ID, and it's gonna have to have these PFVs, it's gonna have to have a get the da, 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 So all it is is a technique for in telling you that if you're gonna implement this thing, you have to include the following things. Okay, so it's like a contract. You have to, when you sign up for the contract by implementing an interface, then it immediately says, "Here, you got to do the following." Now, let me give you a crazy example. And trust me, we're going to come back and make a. Uh, I'll, I'll do. I'll do a better job of explaining why as soon as we've done one. Okay, so here's one that I made up. This is a, an interface for a department table. I mean, a department. A class. So I'm saying that when it comes time for you to, to create a department class, you're going to have to have uh, a setter called dep name and a getter called, uh, you know, get dep name and one called get supervisor and one called, you know, set supervisor. And then you're going to have to have a two strings and an equals. So all notice that, first of all, the, the keyword is interface up here, not class. Okay. It's not a class. And all these things are just stubbed out. You see the semicolon? That you never actually see it quite like that, do you? Because almost all the time, 
Uh, these guys are going to have, you know, curly braces with some stuff inside. So interfaces, 99% of the time, don't have any code in them at all. They're just stubbed out. These are like reminders. It's just like over here saying, you're going to have to do something called set depth name, and you're going to have to do something called, you know, get depth name, right? It's not any different than that. So I'm going to do one and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to create a department. So I'm going to go here to new. It's going to be a Java class and I'm going to call it department. Okie dokie. And so not extends, but implements. Implements. I department. Okay. Now, as soon as I do this, I get a red squiggly saying, whoa, 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 you got a mistake. What do you think that mistake is? Well, it's a contract. So the mistake basically says, you have not fulfilled the obligations of the contract. You didn't have a get depth name and a set get name, right? You don't have those things. But let me show you a cool trick. If you click on the little thing here, one of the things it asks is, would you like me to implement all of the abstract, abstract methods for me? Cool. Now, I'll admit <clears throat> it does not do a very good job, but at least it writes some code for you. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Whoop. And so, yes, it created me a, a, uh, a set, a getter, and a set, and a getter, and equals. I thought it had two string in there. Oh, well. Now, admittedly, um, <clears throat> There's no, it all it did was just stub it out. So stop. Now I think we're far enough into it that we can explain why we're doing this. Okay. So <clears throat> if an interface is like a contract, that I mean that that requires you to write certain things. Cool. Um. So interfaces just stub out stuff. It never. No, not I can't say never. 99% uh, of the time, it doesn't have any code in it whatsoever. So that's not what its purpose is. Its purpose is a reminder. Oh, by the way, if you want to build a depart department class of any type, then you're going to have to have these guys. Cool. So interface is the name of the thing, right? This guy. That's what the keyword interface is. That means this is an interface. And its little symbol over here is slightly different. And then when I create one, it's called implements. Okay, it's an implements. And here I can make it implement more than one thing. I can put a comma and have it implement I department or something else, you know, organization or something, building, I don't know, whatever else you want to throw in there. Okay, so what are the rules? The method signatures must be terminated by a semicolon. Yes, I, I did that. Cool. Um, they're not allowed to have any code in there. There is one exception, but we'll never use it. And um, remember, I can have multiple ones. I can't have what's equivalent to multiple inheritance. Well, it's actually not multiple inheritance. It's multiple implementations. Okay. So how often would you, in your normal everyday programming, how often would you decide, you know, I think I'm going to write me an interface here. Probably not. It is probably likely that you would never, uh, if you're writing in user applications, right? Just writing, a, I don't know, a game or whatever it is you're writing, you probably never write an interface. So you might ask yourself, so what is the point if, of interfaces? Well, there is a point and it's not in writing them. There's a point in consuming them, implementing them. So let me go back and do one more example and I'll explain why this is actually a pretty doggone cool thing. Okay, so I am gonna scoot back to our original guy here. Okay, so remember this guy here, this imp list, okay? So what if I wanted to sort that guy, right? But I wanna sort my imp list, that, that makes sense to me, right? So I say, uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do it below where we had this thing. 
So if I say imp list, and is there a sort guy? Oh, wow, great, there's a sort guy. And then there's this thing so it says comparator, super employee class. What on earth are they talking about? Well, how would you, how would you like me to sort this? Would you like me to sort them by their employee ID, their first name, their last name, their position, their pay? I mean, when you're asking it to sort, you're going to have to tell it how you're going to sort. That is the, and the way you do that is you provide a, a class that implements a interface. Ooh. Okay. So when I need to tell somebody how to sort, I'm going to do it by creating a class that implements an interface. So the power of interfaces is not what you can do when you create an interface. The power of interfaces is what you can get these special functions, these, you know, these advanced functions like sorting to work. So I need to create me another class. So I'm going to create me a class here. And we're going to call this one, I don't know, something like uh, sort by last name. That sounds like a good name for a class. Okay, and so I need to implement an interface. Well, which interface is it? Dang. Well, if you if you were paying attention, it was one called compare comparator. That's the name of the interface. Comparator. All right, right off the bat, it comes back and says, "Hey, man, you're not even, you're not even, okay. Fine, great. I'll click here and say implement all abstract methods. Well, actually, I don't want to do all that. I just want to do the the compare to. Okay, so it created me a, a compare to. Actually, hmm, okay. So uh, instead of this being object one it's going to be employee so i'm going to go here and say uh, base employee uh, imp1 base employee imp2 and then all i have to do is go in here and implement this thing So how come I got a red squiggly? Uh, because I can't create an instance of those guys, right? I'm not, I'm, am I really trying to create an instance of those guys? Before we get too much further, be, there's a particular type of, of notation here. Let's go back and look at that notation. All right, when I type C, come on, give me the IntelliSense now. Oh, come on. It's not going to give me IntelliSense now for some reason. I got it. There. Comparator, then it has the angle brackets thing. So that's what I didn't do in my example. So I'm going to go back to sort by last name. And I'm going to implement um, employee base like that. Okay. Shoo. Oh, that is not what I wanted to do. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want to compare the two. So how do I want to compare this? Well, you have to wait till the next video to find out. <laughs>